Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to, before we introduce and start this meeting, we're going to wait uh, maybe a minute or two um, to see if I have uh, uh, any of my council colleagues joining us uh, so we could have quorum uh, before proceeding with the meeting. Mm -hmm. So allow me uh, like a minute or two. Thank you. All right, I think we're back on track now. Um, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to the July 15, 2024 Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability Committee meeting. I am Councilman Amir Hernandez. I am chair of this committee. This meeting is broadcasting live on HPA TV's Xfinity Government Channel 96 and Frontier Government Channel 6032. It will also be streamed via hpatv.org 
the HPA TV Facebook page and HPA TV, Apple TV, Amazon TV, and Roku TV apps. It will also be made available on the HPA TV YouTube channel. I'd like to acknowledge uh, my council colleagues here present today. Uh, in order of, I, I see them on the screen, I have mm -hmm. Councilman Josh Mictum and Councilwoman Molly Rosemary. Uh, also with us is our Corporate Council, Jonathan Hardy. Uh, we have two items on the agenda. Um, one of the items is a follow-up on, on a discussion we had last week, and then the other one has been uh, was a postponed item from our previous uh, meetings. So our first one is 2.1. Uh, Councilwoman Mari Rosado, Councilman John Gale, Councilwoman Kelly Bilodu, Councilman Alex Thomas, Councilman Amilcar Hernandez, Councilman Josh Mixon, resolution for the introduction and support of a pedal pop service by a local franchise owner in Hartford, Connecticut. And we have Pat Pentalo that will present uh, his uh, report uh, based on the uh, questions that were directed at him uh, during the last meeting. So, Pat, the floor is yours. Thank you, Councilman. Um, yeah, I, I, if you if everybody did get a chance to review the uh, the memo that I sent over, um, you know, at, at your request, we went back to both DPW and the, uh, the the police department and checked on. Obviously, the first and foremost thing was safety. That was the number one concern that was raised uh, in the original discussion uh, in this committee. Um, Obviously, um, DPW, both DPW and PD, uh, both shared some safety concerns, um, especially when they looked at some of the proposed routes. Uh, specifically, the, uh, the police department was concerned, um, especially on Main Street. Uh, I know that the vendor um, made mention of uh, their, I think, their operation in Broadway in Nashville, and you know, a couple of us who were on the original call. We're uh, speaking about the differences between Broadway and Nashville and Main Street, Hartford. Uh, Broadway tends to be a lot more congested, so their their traffic's always at a standstill, so the bikes are able to kind of weave in and out, as opposed to Main Street when you have cars going at a little bit higher of a, a, a higher rate of speed. Um, they were comfortable uh, potentially doing them uh, or offering this service uh, in areas in which traffic didn't uh, didn't exist, like a park. Um, and then uh, obviously we have uh, Corp Council on here where we ran that by them and that may present some ordinance challenges. So um, these, these are just uh, some concerns that uh, were, were shared from uh, DPWPD. I'll let uh, Corp Council go into uh, some of his concerns as far as the ordinance changes, uh, but we're still willing to work with the operator and essentially go back to them with some of these concerns and see if they're interested in proceeding forward. All right. Uh, thank you, Director uh, Pentalo. Uh, are there any questions or comments from any of my council colleagues? Uh, Councilwoman Rosado. Hi, uh, Director Pentalo. So my, when I read the, and thank you for um, sending that memo over um, with the input of DPW and the Hartford Police Department. Um, so the first thing that um, came to mind was, yes, we're comparing, um, what is it that you say, was it Nashville? Yeah, Broadway and Nashville, right. yeah. Um, but what happens with New Haven and all the other cities in Connecticut that that the pedal pub is successful? Mm -hmm. they, 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 again, these were um, these were just comments. We, we didn't really go into specifically into New Haven. These were just, these simply were looking at the proposed routes. Um, and we even uh, discussed with DPW, um, having them potentially go in some of the bike lanes. And when we looked at the dimensions, they concluded that they were too narrow to fit these in there. So I don't know if, if New Haven operates on some of the bike lanes in their city that are a little bit wider that allow these to kind of operate or, because I've, I've never seen them in the streets in New Haven, unless somebody else has uh, on the call has seen them. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're in downtown area, they're all over the city. And I, I would have thought that, you know, um, the department would have talked to the other cities mm -hmm. um, and not just gone with, you know, what Tennessee has to say. We're, we're talking here about about um, Connecticut and, and see, you know, what the pros and cons were. And this is something that's been in effect in 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 um, in New Haven since 2017. And it's been very successful. Mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, as a council person, I, I want to bring these type of of. Um, different uh, venues to the city of Hartford, right? We want to um, make it more welcoming so that residents from other cities come in, come into Hartford. And so 
I just have, you know, a difficult time just, you know, processing that we're just looking at Tennessee and not actually talking to 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 the other cities. Thank yeah, you. Count, count, Council, if I could, uh, just, uh, and then I see um, Mr. McNam has, has his hand up as well. Um, if I, and by the way, as director of economic development, nobody wants to see a business, an amenity based business like that, like this more more than I do, right? And I think. Um, I think in terms of Broadway, because that was discussed on the call originally when they presented, that was just something that we were kind of, it was it was brought to the attention of um, PD and DPW because a lot of folks that were on that call internally have also attended and used some of those in, in an area like Nashville. Um, I, I, I would, I, specifically, I would say that but we probably should do a better job of, of coordinating with New Haven. I'm not specifically saying throw it out. I think that the whole intention of this memo was to echo what specifically those departments had concerns about, relay them to you, and then work with the operator to kind of move forward. I don't think the intention was to dismiss this just because on Broadway and Nashville that, you know, there's congestion and made for cars go fast. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Council, uh, Councilman Mitchell. Thank you. You know, I wanted to just, it's not exactly the same comment that uh, Councilman Rosado made, but if the issue is that traffic moves fast on Main Street, which, you know, I guess depending where on Main Street, kind of, although not that fast because we have all the buses that pull in and out. Mm -hmm. One of the sort of fundamental theories of, of why it's good, for example, to have bike lanes, as an example, whether or not you have a lot of bike traffic, is that when you narrow streets, and you create barriers and you slow traffic, you know, we're not talking about a major thoroughfare, right? It's sort of a busy business area. When you slow traffic, it actually makes it safer. It creates an environment that's nicer for walking and nicer for other businesses to thrive. So my feeling is if the problem is that these things, these, you know, these big pedal pubs are going to take up space and move slowly, maybe that's not a problem. Maybe that's good. Um, you know, I understand that like HPD comes from the perspective of like the purpose of streets is cars. Mm -hmm. But if the vision is to create the kind of environment that they have in Nashville, or I, um, I used one once when I was at a, a wedding in uh, Charleston, mm -hmm. they, um, yeah, they, they slow traffic. And the people on them are sort of going a little faster than walking and they create an environment that's aimed at pedestrians and creating mm -hmm. a pedestrian space. So, I mean, I understand what the police are saying, but it doesn't really seem like a criticism. It just seems like a failure of imagination. Oh, and, and by the way, uh, I think they're looking at it at their lens, which is they're looking at worst case scenarios. What happens if all of a sudden a car plows into one of these things at 40, 50 miles an hour? So I think, I think to your point, you're correct. I think we want to engage in, in fostering an environment where we do have slower traffic and we do make it more walkable and bike accessible. But I think they're looking at it through the, the lens of worst case scenario, which in all fairness, that is their job. Right. But I guess what I would say is like by that reasoning, we shouldn't have bicycle lanes at all because unless they're protected bike lanes, because what happens if someone hits a bike going fast and that person gets hurt? But we yep. have bike and, yep. you know, in, the point is to change how the streets work to create an environment that's friendly for walking and, and small businesses and things like that. So I, you know, I understand why the police say what they say, but I think yeah. we as a committee and as a larger council body can also say thanks, but no thanks on that particular bit of advice. <laughs> and, and again, to, to, to reiterate every, every, uh, every member of this committee, I, I am in full support of this. I think this would be a huge amenity to the city. These are just these are just comments that the departments were echoing in regards to some concerns at a high level that they had. Um, these are all things that we can collaboratively work with with the operator to move it forward. This is just these are just the, the high level concerns that were conveyed. Um, I mean, again, uh, Corp Council. Mr. Harding, um, if you wanted to maybe brief uh, the committee on some of the concerns that you had from an ordinance perspective, uh, you know, as far as limiting it to, to um, places in parks, um, that, I think that would be helpful for um, the members of the committee as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll defer to the chair whenever, you know, he's ready, you know, if he has any particular questions. Okay. 
Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harding. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, through you, I have um, I have a couple of concerns, and I think I mentioned them before. Primarily, it's just our ordinances generally prohibit the consumption of alcohol um, and public rights of way, and we'd have to sort of address that because these folks would obviously be unless. The operator decides to go the sort of dry route. If they plan on serving alcohol, they would have to, you know, these participants would be basically drinking in a public right of way. Um, and I think we would probably have to address um, our ordinances in order to to fix that prohibition, right? Because we don't allow folks to walk our sidewalks um, and consume alcohol. And I think, you know, the vehicle being an open an open vehicle, they would be consuming, openly consuming alcohol in a public right of way. Thank you. Councilman Mitchell. Just a question on the law around this, and I, I was not at all my area area of expertise, but I had so the open, you said open vehicle, because I understood, for example, that when a person, like, you know, those party buses that folks rent, those it's okay, the law says, to consume alcohol in those as a passenger because although you're on the public right of way, you're enclosed. That's I the think that is yeah. I think that's the safest interpretation. I think the difference is these folks are really they're really openly drinking in a in a public right of way, right? I mean, they're visible to the public. They're visible to um, people on the sidewalks, etc. I think it is different. I mean, I don't think there's any real case law or any law that defines that difference but i think you know the i think at first glance it's clear that it is a different you know activity is it it's state law or city ordinance or both so city ordinance says you cannot drink alcohol in a public right of way and in public areas i think state law i can't remember the way it's worded but basically state law does not prohibit open containers and vehicles obviously drivers cannot drive intoxicated but there is no open container prohibition understandable so to your feeling is to make this work we would have to change city ordinances in some way yeah and that's the tricky part as i think i mentioned before mm -hmm. my concern is how do you draft that in a way that is um clear right um and is also fair because you know these folks are going to be openly drinking in an open air vehicle in our rights of way, you know, how do you, you know, how do you then prohibit someone from operating some other kind of open vehicle with open containers in it or, you know, a motorcycle or something. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's a little bit tricky to draft that distinction um, in order to make it clear in our ordinances. I mean, I don't, we don't need to get into the weeds. I mean, it's possible though, right? Like we could come up with, we could pick a rule, right? We could say, you know, no vehicle that travels over 15 miles an hour or something like that. Yeah, a a absolutely. I mean, you know, I would be happy to help you with crafting whatever it looks like. I just would note that it will be a little tricky to draft in a, in a way that's clear, but like nothing's impossible. And I'd certainly be happy to work with you on it. I guess that's what I'm saying is like, it's it's an obstacle for, for us to sort of understand and vote on this, it's an obstacle, but it's not an insurmountable obstacle. Sure. I think we could draft something that makes sense. And then from a policy perspective, obviously, be up to all of you to decide where those lines were drawn from a policy perspective. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Rosado. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So on those, on those notes, um, Corporation Council of drafting um, the ordinance. So we're, we really want to be reinventing the wheel when the Elm City in New Haven, um, pedal crews in Milford and pedal crews in Stanford have been doing this for over six years when it comes to the state statute. With regards to their own local ordinances, I would have to look, perhaps they don't have uh, an express prohibition on consuming alcohol in a public right of way, you know? Okay. Uh, you all set? 
Councilwoman. Oh, um, Mr. Sh Chair, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, Councilman Clark has this. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you were done, so I was waiting. So thank you, uh, Councilman uh, uh, Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I think that uh, there's more research that needs to be done uh, regarding this uh, with the fact of, uh, especially with understanding how in comparable cities, New Haven does it. Uh, we need to really find out, do they actually operate in the street uh, or are they on the sidewalks or is there a specific lane um, that has been uh, created to accommodate uh, this, um, uh, this this pedal pup service? Uh, because um, we really need to adhere to the um, the recommendations from the police and public works because um, if we're going to, let's say, slow the streets, that's going to entail uh, some infrastructure monies being appropriated uh, to do a do, do a complete redesign of some of the main thoroughfares in Hartford. So I don't think this is this is a although the concept is great, uh, it's not a fully uh, fully baked item that. Uh, we should move on just yet without more research. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Any other questions? Uh, Councilman Mitchell. You know, I just want to I want to push back respectfully against Councilman Clark in this in this sense. Like we're to approve this resolution one, only it doesn't usher in the business, right? There's many more steps. Obviously, there will be occasions for the bit. Like, I feel like if we say yes here, and then if council says yes, it's not like suddenly it's there and now we're on the hook for infrastructure costs or, or whatever else. I feel like it's really just sort of the initial, let's come to the table and, and see if we can work out the kinks or not. And, and you know, maybe it, it doesn't work out or maybe we, we, the city, ultimately say to the operator, we want you to do this and this and this, and you can only operate in these places. And they say, eh, you know what, not worth it for us. But I would say that we are in a position to say this initial yes. One, because I don't think there's a lot of harm in it, right? We're not committing ourselves to anything. And two, because if we agree that this is at least potentially a nice thing, a thing that could bring business and people downtown and and all of that. All of that, I think we all sort of see that there's some upside. It should be our posture as a general sense to say yes to new ideas and to new things and not to get overly caught up in, wow, this isn't exactly like what we've known. Wow, this might make traffic go slower and send a message, I think, to a lot of businesses that yeah, Hartford's not worth it. They always get caught up in this and that. So I would gently ask you colleagues of mine to, to vote yes on this now, because I think we can do the initial yes. We're not, there's, there's no downside now. And if, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can't make it work out. We can't make it work out, but let's have an attitude of saying yes to interesting ideas and, and working out the details down the line. Um, so, uh, just to clarify, just for clarification, the, this resolution doesn't call for any vote of any type. So there is no yes or no on this resolution. Uh, this resolution was, uh, for, to ask, uh, you know, the owners, the franchisee owners, uh, to make a presentation, which they did already. And we then, and then this conversation today is, uh, as a result of questions that were asked um to director pencil to come back with some of the feedback from the other eight it's a state you know city um city departments uh but there is really no vote uh to be taken uh because this resolution is not to approve any particular uh, approval of anything uh, of any business um so and that's why uh one of the uh, uh questions that i was gonna uh put out is that i know that uh director pencil said that in his recommendation and his memo he mentioned that uh, the administration still is willing to continue having conversations with the uh, franchisee owners to kind of figure out if there are any other ways and, and figure out, you know, how they can attend uh, these concerns. Uh, so at this point, I'm, I'm, what I'm visualizing is for the administration to continue engaging in those conversations, um, you know, uh, unless there's a particular reason why this agenda item should stay in this committee for further conversations. But... Uh, I, I see the administration uh, it's willing and 
and has already uh, mentioned today that they are that they would like to continue these conversations uh, directly with the uh, with the franchisee owners. Uh, I don't know if any of you have any other uh, thoughts. Um, so I'll open it just for just to apologize for misunderstanding the nature of the resolution. We're talking needlessly. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, Councilman Rosado, you have anything? No. No. All right. Well, I, I just want to say to you, Mr. Chair, that the intent of this resolution when I wrote it was for the Pedal Club to just come and present um, this idea. It wasn't, you know, uh, a, a yes or a no. It was just a presentation, which um, Director Penelo did a great job and came and presented. And it didn't come out of committee, right, because he was asked to get, you know, further explanation on um, on those items that we discussed today. But we could just discharge it as a presentation. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, that was my thought. And, and I'm, I'm glad that we we, we kept it here. So that way uh, we allow Director Penelo to come back to the committee and and, and present you know uh, further information uh, based on the questions we we posed um, last month, uh, but I think at this point uh, the chair will move to discharge this item from the committee uh, and just kind of report it uh, back to the whole of city council on the next meeting. Um, so moved. Second. Okay. Well, the <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> sure that this was the process. I thought I could just discharge it, but um, I, I I'll follow uh, follow suit. Um, so the uh, the motion has been uh, uh, made and properly second. Um, is everyone uh, agreeing? Just say aye. Aye. Well, there you go. I learned something new today. So um, next item on the agenda. It's uh, item 2.2, uh, Councilwoman Mali Rosado, Councilman John Gale, Councilman George Mixon, resolution of the Hartford Court, Court, Court of Common Council for reviewing and amending handicap parking policies and meter charges in collaboration with the Hartford Parking Authority and disability rights organizations. Um, Councilwoman Rosado, do you have any updates on this item? No, I don't have any update. I'm gonna ask um, that we keep this in committee. I have one more conversation um, with, um, State Representative James Sanchez. Um, this is something that he um, was going to champion <laughs> before he became a state rep. And so I kind of took it over. So um, we just need to ad address uh, another memo with um, a couple of questions regarding other cities. And so I'm going to ask for a motion um, to postpone in committee. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and properly second. All, are, all in agreeing. Again, aye, uh, aye, aye, aye. Okay, item has been uh postponed and it will be uh shown on the next um OMBGA committee uh in August. Uh, seeing that these are the only two items and there are no more items or discussions to be had, uh, this committee meeting uh is now adjourned. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you.